Hi guys, sorry to interrupt your video. Just a quick plea, subscribe to my channel please. If you haven't done it already, subscribe. Tell your friends, subscribe. Thanks. Theory test again, uh, this time on the topic of attitude. You got an attitude, son? You got Tell something? If you're you want enough. a slap or something? Don't know where that came from. Right. Attitude. Let's have a look here. What must you do when the amber light is flashing at a pelican crossing? Right. Go and have a look at my pedestrian crossings video. That's the answer to that one. So, amber light is flashing at a pelican crossing. You can stop. Well, you basically got to stop if there's somebody on the crossing. If the pro crossing is clear, you can go. Because that's what a flashing amber light means. So, stop and wait for green light. No. Stop and wait for the red light. No. Give way to pedestrians waiting to cross. Give way to pedestrians already on the crossing. So if there's anybody on the crossing, you have to give way to them. That one, give way to pedestrians waiting to cross. Um, if the amber light is flashing, it's going to go too green. So if they're waiting to cross, they've missed their opportunity. Of course, if it looks like they're going to step out, don't go. Right, pelican crossings are signal controlled crossings operated by pedestrians. Push button controls change the signals. Pelican crossings that have no red and amber stage before green, instead they have a flashing amber light. This means you must give way to pedestrians who are on the crossing, but if the crossing is clear, you can continue. It's the same as a uh, zebra crossing. You're driving behind a large goods vehicle. What should you do if it signals left but steers to the right? Okay, let's say, so what's he doing? He signals left but steers to the right. Here we go. So, oh, let me. Oh, hello. I've lost my mouse. That's rubbish, isn't it? Zoom in, people. Okay, here we go. So, uh, he is going wide. Oh, God, rubbish. What is that? You get the idea. He's going wide. Now, the reason they go wide is because they've got to get the back of their vehicle around the corner. Uh, again, I've gone and recorded a video today about uh, transport for London and cyclists and things like that. So have a look at that. But that will show you that the vehicle, a large vehicle, will need to swing wide to get around the corner. So the front of the vehicle will go out here somewhere to allow the back to go round. So vehicles do that. Oh, it's worked now. Weird. Um, so, you're behind a large goods vehicle. What should you do if it signals left but steers to the right? Well, stay away from it because it's just about to go left, isn't it? So, slow down and let the vehicle turn. Love that. Drive on, keep to the left. No. Overtake on the right of it. No, because it's swinging right. Hold your speed and sound your horn. Yeah, right. Large vehicles need extra space when turning. Um, simple. You've just seen that. You're driving in traffic at the speed limit for the road. What should you do if the driver behind is trying to overtake? Well, if he's trying to overtake, basically you don't want to hold him up or cause him more concern, but you basically keep an eye on him. So if he goes for the overtake, you might assist him by slowing down, maybe something like that. So let's have a look. Move closer to the vehicle ahead so the car has no room to overtake. No, that's daft. We've got a bloke who's probably going to try to put his car there, so don't put yours there. Wave the driver behind to overtake when it's safe. No, let him make the decision, not you. Keep a steady course and allow the vehicle to overtake. Well, that makes sense. Uh, accelerate to get away from the driver behind. No, you know, um, he'll only come with you. So just let him do it. It's fine. You don't have to do anything in particular. Just keep a steady course to give the driver behind an opportunity to overtake safely. If necessary, slow down. So if he goes for it, slow down so he can get past quicker. Uh, reacting incorrectly to other drivers' impatience can lead to danger. Fine. What should you do when a person herding sheep asks you to stop? Right. Uh, that. Uh, pum. Let me move that across. Right, okay, so. Well, basically, anyone in charge of an animal, you're supposed to comply with. So, uh, we could go with that. So what should you do when a person herding sheep asks you to stop? Stop and switch the engine off. That makes sense. Um, ignore them. No. Continue on but drive slowly. No. Drive to get past quickly. No. Anybody in charge of an animal who asks you to do something is be 
they're asking you to do that because they know the animal and you being there is causing a problem now if i go to here dun, 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 the highway code rule 214 uh, it says animals when passing animals drive slowly give them plenty of room and be ready to stop do not scare animals by sounding your horn revving your engine or accelerating rapidly once you have passed them look out for animals being led driven or ridden on the roads and take extra care keep your speed down at bends and on narrow country roads if a road is blocked by a herd of animals stop and switch off your engine until they have left the road watch out for animals on unfenced roads so such as going through the uh, new forest for instance we've got wild horses and i think you get pigs and i think you get the odd cow but uh and whilst we're here we'll do horse riders and horse drawn vehicles um be particularly careful of horse riders and horse drawn vehicles especially when overtaking always pass wide and slow horse riders are often children so take extra care and remember riders may ride in double file when escorting a young or inexperienced horse or rider Look out for horse riders and horse ride, uh, drivers' signals and heed a request to slow down or stop. Take uh, great care and treat all horses as a potential hazard. They can be unpredictable despite the efforts of their rider driver. Absolutely right. They're a blooming nightmare. Overtaking animals. Uh, in fact, there's a document all on overtaking but i have taken bits out of it overtaking animals horses it's in there i explain fully why it is a nightmare all right but anyway if this bloke asks you to stop you stop and switch the engine pow what should you do when overtaking a horse and rider overtaking horses or animals there's a video done it go and watch it uh but basically don't muck about with a horse it could kill you so sound your horn as a warning no don't want to startle it go past as quickly as possible no a horse can jump sideways at 55 miles an hour don't approach a horse at speed if it suddenly jumps in front of your car watch the video it explains why a horse might jump in front of your car because you are not the scary thing you see that's the problem flash your headlights as a warning no do not want to startle go past slowly and carefully yes but watch the video all right i could go into it in great detail but there's a video about it so i'll let it do it instead basically wide and slow possibly better if you stop and let them go past you but watch the video you're approaching a red light at a puffin crossing pedestrians are on the crossing when will the light change right it's a puffin pedestrian user friendly interface it has an infrared sensor go and watch the video about pedestrian crossings and it tells you that the crossing knows that there's a pedestrian on there so it will wait for the pedestrian to leave before it changes the lights so uh, when will the red light change when you start to edge forward no when the pedestrians have cleared the crossing yes because it knows that they're there when the pedestrians push the button on the far side of the crossing no you never do that do you when a driver from the opposite direction reaches crossing. No, it's the infrared sensor that is telling them. What style of driving causes increased risk to everyone? We've got considerate. No, of course not. If you're considerate, you're being very nice, aren't you? Defensive. Defensive driving means looking in advance and anticipating other people's actions and reacting to and changing the way you drive in anticipation of somebody else's actions. Therefore, you are unlikely to cause extra risk to someone because you're already anticipating them. competitive yes if you're racing then um you're going to kill people responsible well no obviously that doesn't increase the risk so we're going to go with competitive why should you never wave people at a pedestrian crossing read the pedestrian crossings or watch the video uh, but another vehicle may be coming the issue is that if you wave somebody across the road they have a habit of just going oh thank you and walking out they don't look the other way so we do not want to invite somebody out into a road knowing that they could well not bother to check all right so another vehicle may be coming they won't have looked they may not be looking um well that is true 
if you're safe for you to carry on no they may not be ready to cross no not one of these two so why should you never wave people across a pedestrian crossing uh, well that's sort of implying that they may not be going there another vehicle may be coming i'm going to go with that that's the danger isn't it they may not be looking in what direction it's a bit woolly so i'm thinking another vehicle may be coming yes if people are waiting to use a pedestrian crossing slow down and be prepared to stop don't wave them across the road because another driver may not have seen them uh, may not have seen your signal and may not be able to stop safely so there's the danger from the other car as well as these people 